Hello, in this video, we're going to find the inverse of this rational function. Our function is f of x equals 2x minus 3, all being divided by x plus 1. We're going to use a step-by-step -step process that you can follow to find the inverses of other functions that you encounter. So it's a pretty useful technique. Solution. The very first step is to replace your function f of x with the variable y. So step one, I'm just going to rewrite everything, and instead of f of x, I'm just going to put y. So y equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. That's the first step. The second step is to interchange or switch your x's and y's. So step two, instead of y, I'm going to put x. And then everywhere you see an x, you want to put a y. So this is 2y minus 3 over, and then here you have y plus 1. So again, the first step, you just replace your f of x with y. In the second step, you just switch your x's and y's. Third step is where the problem can get difficult, or it can be easy. It's we actually have to solve this equation for y. So I'm going to write it up here. And I'm going to go ahead and write the equation again. So we have x equals 2y minus 3 over y plus 1. And we have to solve this for y. So right away, we can see there's a problem because there's a y in the denominator. And there's also one in the numerator. So a good first step is to clear the fractions. We can do that by multiplying both sides by y plus 1. We have y plus 1. And over here we have y plus 1. These cancel, so we end up with y plus 1 times x, so y plus 1 times x equals, and then over here we just have 2y minus 3. And we're looking for y, it's trapped in these parentheses, so let's go ahead and distribute. x times y is just going to give us x times y, and then x times 1 is just going to give us x. Now on the right hand side, we have 2y minus 3. This is the place where a lot of people get stuck in this problem because you have a y over here and you have a y over here. Whenever you have a situation like this, what you want to do is you want to get all of the terms that have y's and you want to put them on one side by themselves so you can factor out the y and solve for it. I'm going to subtract 2y and subtract x. So we have xy subtracting 2y, so it's going to come over here on the left, we're going to get minus 2y, and then subtracting x, that's going to give us negative 3 minus x. And you can show some work, I can do this, minus 2y, boom, minus 2y, you have xy minus 2y, xy minus 2y, then you can do minus x, minus x, boom, if xy minus 2y, xy minus 2y equals negative 3 minus x, which is negative 3 minus x. At this point, we're in a really good place because we can factor out that y. So parentheses. And then we have to ask, what goes here, right? What do we multiply by y in order to get xy? Well, just x. And what goes here? Well, what do we multiply by y in order to get negative 2y? Well, negative 2. And this is equal to negative 3 minus x. And we're looking for y. It's being multiplied by x minus 2. So we can divide both sides by x minus 2. And then this cancels. And so we end up with y equals negative 3 minus x over x minus 2. And that would be the inverse function. As a good last step, it might be a good idea to uh, rewrite this. By the way, in all of this, x is not equal to 2, obviously. Right? Otherwise, there's an issue. So step four would be to just use the proper notation for y. It's really f inverse of x, and that's equal to minus 3 minus x over x minus 2. And so this would be the inverse function in this particular example. So this is a really standard problem in the sense that um, this is something that you, you see a lot of. So let's just go over the steps really briefly again just to make sure that you got it. 
we had to find the inverse of this function, which is a rational function. And so the first step is to replace your f of x with the variable y. So we did that here in step one. We just let y equal to f of x. We set that equal. And then we switched all the x's and y's. So y became x, x becomes y. We just interchange all of those variables. And then in step three, we actually have to solve for y. And that's really the hardest part of this problem. So we have a y down here. So we multiplied both sides by y plus one to clear the fractions. Then when we got here, we decided to distribute the x. So x times y is x times y. x times one is x. And then we get here, xy plus x equals 2y minus three. So you have y's on both sides of this equation. Whenever that happens, what you want to do is you want to get all of the y's together on one side by themselves. And that, and that way you can factor out a y and solve. So we did that here. We had y times x minus two equals negative three minus x. And because it was being multiplied by x minus two, we did the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So we divided by x minus two, and that gave us y equals negative three minus x over x minus two. I made a point here, x is not equal to two, right? Because then you would get um, division by uh, zero. So something to keep in mind. And then the very last step is to write it using the proper notation. So let me just write it again so you see how to read it. It's f inverse of x. Okay, so it's f inverse of x. So f, you read f. The little negative one, you say inverse. When you see the parentheses, you say of. So it's f inverse of x is equal to, and it's going to be minus 3 minus x all over x minus 2. So it's also a rational function. Now, you could check your answer if you wanted to. I'm not going to because it'll take forever. But to check your answer, you could check. So in order to check thoroughly, you would have to check that f of f inverse of x. And then this should be equal to x. Likewise, f inverse of f of x, this should also be equal to x. So you could go through the painful, well, not, I don't know about painful, but laborious process of checking to see um, that the function you got is actually correct. Sometimes um, you'll have a problem where you're forced to, it'll ask you to do this, it'll just ask you to check, or they'll give you like two functions, f and g, and you verify their inverses. Notice it appears that they're canceling. That's intentional, right? That notation is intentional, right? That's, that's on purpose, that's, that's created for that purpose, right? If you think about x times x to the negative one, as long as x is not zero, right, this is one. So x times one over x is one, right? So you can kind of think of it as the same way, right? And um, so yeah, kind of interesting. Anyways, this is how you find uh, the inverse of your rational function. Hopefully this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world who is learning some algebra and studying inverse functions. Until next time, good luck.